but you will be. So um, this is saying um, happy Eid to every every Muslim faithful out there uh, today. Um, I hope that you have a beautiful celebration um, and you, I mean, manage your way because I hear that the cost of living is just, is terrible. Every day is, I mean, what's, what did I hear? I'm, I'm, I'm actually experiencing it every other day. So, but we're grateful that we're alive, aren't we? Welcome to Hard Facts. This will be your most authentic news experience. Lagos, um, thank you for joining in. As usual, we start off the show with the big three stories for today. And these are stories that are from the pages of our national dailies. These are stories that are um, actually from um, the bulletins um, from our newsroom. And of course, some of these stories, you are talking about them on social media and that makes them trending stories. So once again, welcome to the show. I'm Mary Anna Cohn and this are the big three stories for today. This is the big three. The big three on the hard facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. Millions of listeners trust us on Hard Facts. Whether it's politics, social issues, controversies, and trending stories, you know we're credible and objective. It is Hard Facts with Miriam Okun on 99.3 Nigeria Info. All right, Lagos. Um, first, a big story for today. We regret voting Tinubu Northern Elders. Um, well, the Northern Elders Forum um, have expressed regrets that the region voted for President Bola Tinubu in 2023. All of the three leading candidates in the 2023 presidential, presidential election, Tinubu, who ran on the platform of the All Progressive Congress, polled the highest votes from the region. Now, in an interview with the Guardian newspaper, um, Yesterday, Abdulaziz Suleiman, a uh, spokesperson for the forum, said, Going forward, the region will prioritize unity and consensus in selecting a candidate for the highest office in the land. I mean, quizzed about, you know, the recent visit and donations by Peter Albi, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 general elections to communities in the northern state. Suleiman said the region would prioritize someone who is seen as more inclusive, less controversial, more aligned, with the interest of all regions in the country. He said, and I quote, the North made a mistake in voting Bola Tinubu to presidency in 2023, and it's unlikely that they will repeat the same error in the future. I'm just, I'm thinking to myself, because I, I remember um, the guy who led, who used to be the spokesperson for um, the Northern Elders Forum, who's now been given a, a portfolio in the vice president's office um, was on my show on TV. And I asked him, as usual, where will the North be pandering to? Who will they, as Northern elders, be throwing their weight behind? And he said, well, um, from everything he said to me, sounded more like, well, well I mean, let's see how it goes. Uh, but then I'm just thinking to myself, when they were throwing their weight behind Mr. President, did they not consider all of these things? Is this not medicine after death? Or, I mean, crying over spilled milk? Or, I mean, has, can people really make the right choice per se on behalf of other people? Um, because many would say, oh, well, you know, these are elders, so whatever they tell the people, the people are going to do it. But I don't know. What are your thoughts on this um, no vote of confidence that um, the, Nash the um, Northern Elders Forum um, have on Mr. President. Let's move away from that. Let's talk about something I really don't want to talk about today, but unfortunately, it's a big story. But anyway, uh, they bury 17 persons killed by herders as governor suggests solution. Let me talk about these killings. Um, it's just really sad that on Christmas Day, killings, the beginning of the year, killings, and these killings, you see, we keep hearing all of these postulations about if care is not taken, we're going to have food insecurity, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we need. Do you remember when, um, what's it? I think it's the Red Cross International, yeah. Tried to raise about 27 billion or 2.7 billion, if I'm not mistaken, or 23 billion, something like that, to try to feed people in Nigeria. Did you hear it? Do you remember that story where we were wondering that has Nigeria become a serious case of you know um food security that the icr the international red cross society yes would now have to be soliciting for funds to feed people within the country it's because of things like this 
the middle belt has been taking a big blow, the food basket of the nation. And even all of the agrarian areas in the north have been desiccated. Farmers are unable to go to their farms, um, even if they do go to at least plants to harvest is another problem. And here we are talking about farmers and herders clash again. According to the governor of Benue State, he said today is a sad day in history of Benue. To line up caskets like this is unacceptable. The Benue government on Tuesday conducted mass burial for 17 of Mbaikyo Gwe East local government area. The victims were last month um, killed um, when suspected armed herders attacked that community. Speaking during the burial of the victims in Mbakio, the state governor, uh, Heinset Alia, said the solution to the incessant attacks on farmers by armed headers was the formation of vigilante groups. I'm thinking, I thought this would have been done years ago. Why do we have to wait till more and more people be killed? We, because we keep coming up with these funny suggestions as opposed to doing it. And when more people die, we come and make some very interesting statements and then we grab media attention and then go back to sleep, business as usual. What must be done, really, to save Nigeria from this food insecurity that we're headed towards? Because now, all the cattle and the goat and whatever they bring from the north is coming in limited qualities, uh, quantities now. The food that you'd normally get from all of those places, Plateau State, Benue State, is coming in lower quantities now, if it even comes because of the attacks that they're facing, it makes it so difficult for us to get all the things that we need to get this way. And don't think that it's just in the middle belt. It's happening in, I've said it before, in river states, the guys who make gari, who, who farm cassava and try to make gari, when they go to their farms, they're killed and they're buried in shallow graves. I'm, talking about, I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about 2017, 2018. And we're not, and we just, you know, we, we, we pay lip service to these things and we're not boosting security. We're not dealing with these issues. And here we are. I'm really sad. I really didn't want to talk about this story, but hey, here we are. And then finally, the one that affects everyone. Uh, according to the Guardian newspaper, cost of trade is five times higher in Nigeria than the U.S., says World Bank. Here we go again. The World Bank is uh, telling us that as a result of insecurity, high transportation cost, Poor topography and bad roads. <laughs> the ones that they're buying 200 million uh, Naira SUVs to drive on. <laughs> that is costing trade in Nigeria to be four to five times higher than what it is obtained, uh, what is obtained in the United States. Now, in the latest Africa Pulse released by the Go uh, Global Bank, uh, it said market distortions across Africa result in high pricing, um, in, in imported food and non-food products, indicating a lack of integration across African markets. Similarly, access to products, um, products market is constrained, uh, which prevents firms and farms from scaling up production. How are they going to scale up production? How much is diesel? Although I'm hearing that it might be coming down to 800. Uh, I don't know. So um, there's a lack of connectivity, there's, uh, there's no market integration. So it means that markets are segmented, allowing firms and farms with market power to capture benefits contributing to income inequality. And this is a problem, and this is something we should talk about on Balogo and Broad, but today we're gonna be going in a different direction. I'll probably just you know push it in there for my guests to answer that question. But these are the stories for today, Lagos. I'm not really happy about the stories, especially what's happening in Benue, in Plateau, in all the Middle Belt areas in the north. It's just really sad. But the question is, when are we going to get our leaders to stop talking and yapping away to beginning to act? Act, as opposed to telling us what you think should be done when you're supposed to be the one doing it. 0201465719, that's 0201465719. You could join the conversation. If you are watching us um, um, on social media, that's on Facebook, where facebook.com forward slash Nigeria Info FM, that's uh, we're live on Facebook. We're also live on YouTube, um, Nigeria Info 99.3. Uh, you could also join the conversation um, if you want to call us from outside of the country. Uh, you call us via Skype, Nigeria Info FM. I would like to hear from you. Welcome to Hard Facts. Hello? Yeah, I'm solid. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Quick one. You remember I mentioned to you on the Todd Melan Did you hear the accident that happened today? No, I didn't hear it. 
Ah, uh, two people punch into the the water there now. They will commercial bus. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I told you that day. I, it look as if I'm the only one observing the speed limit. Oh yes, you told me. You told me about uh-huh. yeah, 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 the other. And I thought I you were saying about today. that commercial bus. Those ones that used to run uh, Obalende to Bega. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He, he had an accident, and two passengers had to plunge into the river. Okay. Today, so you so saw they read it on your news. Because we're used to bad roads. They fix that road. People are confused. Come and see how people are driving, uh, action lady. Mm. Well, that's one aside. Quick one. You see, the Northerners, eh, I like them for their honesty. This man that said they regretted voting for uh, the person they vote for, it's not the first person. One of them has said it before. But back home here, what do you hear? Eh, it's not the cause. Eh, let's move on. In your open border, make rice enter. I was asking, what was the process? Over 20 people died. I asked uh, King of Radio in the morning, um, Kofi Basel, this Benway is something you just mentioned now. Hmm. Where is Kashim Shetima that boasted that he's going to be in charge of security? Where is the governor? Kashim Shetima is the vice president. He's, he's, uh-huh. he's not the governor no. of that state. The first no, responsibility the lies with the governor. The governor will tell you they are not in charge of security. Oh, my God. Even the president himself said insecurity will be the thing of the past. But this morning, I heard somebody making excuses for him. Uh, I will not blame him in the insecurity. In, in Who do you blame? <laughs> Me and Who you. Who do you blame? They blame so us. So for the Northerners, I did tag them for their honesty to come out and say, we regretted voting for this man. But okay. our people back home, open border, make rice enter. Let's move on. That's what you hear from our people. Okay. Thank you, Action Lady. All right. Thank you very much for calling. If you want to join the conversation, we're also on WhatsApp, 080-959-7580. That's 80 Seven five eight zero five. Just send me a message. Don't call us. Just drop a message via WhatsApp, and you can join the conversation on Twitter and on WhatsApp. Um, just in total opposite to what you have just said, uh, Mr. Chris. Someone is saying, "I will never <laughs> take the Northern Elders Forum seriously because once again, money and political patronage will be the determinant or uh, determining factors of the twenty. 27 election. Those in power know how to play the game. Chooks in Igorudu. Okay. All right, I want to go to <laughs> to Facebook Live quickly and read one message and then come back to you guys. All right. Daya, 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 uh, Daya I'm not going to read this message. It's too long. T- you need to learn how to send me two lines or one paragraph. This is too long. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to read the message. I'm so sorry. Hello. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, sir? Where are you calling from? This is Dele from Ikeja. Go ahead, Dele. Yeah, I'm good. I want to talk about this insecurity of a thing. Go ahead. The angle from which I'm looking at it is that I think all of us as a people should begin to condemn people that are carrying out this barbaric act. I have never had people condemn even the people. It's every time the, the government, the government. I was discussing with somebody in one day. I said, okay, as we are in this bus, if I am carrying Bob, will any government official or any security knows? Nobody will know. Will they be following me to know whether I have bad intention? No, we should begin to condemn even, even people that are carrying out this act. Hmm. Rather than all of the time, government... Go, how many and what will the condemnation it? do? Because I've heard people condemn it. What does it do? You say what? What will the condemnation do, sir? We should be no. Okay, the government that we are blaming, with the government official or the or the security, be following everybody all around. Somebody that had the intention for, to do something, but will he announce that this is what I want to do? We should talk to people that are even carrying out this act. That is my point. How do you know the people that are carrying out the act to talk to them? Is it an evangelism of sorts? I don't understand. Is that what? How do you know the people who are carrying it out? And how we are you going know. to evangelize to we them? We don't know. We don't know. What we are saying is that when we come to radio like this and talk or comment on things like this, we should also talk to these people. They will be hearing, of okay. course. Okay. They should be hearing. I get you. All right. Uh-huh. Thank you. All right. But I'm just saying, what will the condemnation do? Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Yeah, this is Obi calling from Ikeja. Obi, go ahead, please. Is that Marianne? Yes. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Obi calling from Ikaja. I know. Uh, my sister, you see this issue of uh, uh, killing in Benin and what? You see the governors, when it comes to handling issues, they say they don't have the, the prerogative to handle such a thing. But when it comes to impeaching their deputy governors, they are very, very fast in doing that. 
you see uh, uh, when when it comes to a lot of rubbish they do they don't they don't they don't, they don't ask questions they do it brazenly they don't want to know but ha- protecting their community their state is so difficult for them what is what is wrong in creating vigilante groups to protect your people what is so difficult about that and for the northern elders for my sister tell them to go and sleep we are not interested in what i say thank you very much okay well just <laughs> well i mean everybody has something to say hello welcome to hard facts hello Marianne. good afternoon good afternoon the northern elders are hypocrites ha- i don't i just don't you people them. be coming down how would you be coming down when Buhari was there, was there no insecurity? What did they say? They were quiet. So because the person who is the leader, I'm not a supporter of Sinumbu, mm. get me right. Mm-hmm. Because the person who is in, in, in the city of Pawana is from the south, they can now open their mouth to talk. Oh, they regret doing this, or they regret. When Buhari was there, there was lots of killing. Yeah, but can I, can, I also hold, can I also hold what brief for them? Can I, okay. can I hold brief for them? Just hold on. Please, let me Again, hear. like I said, I've had many conversations and interviews with the Northern Elders Forum. Um, and the one who's serving in the vice president's office today, I remember under Buhari, when I interviewed him, he also said they regretted supporting him. In fact, in his words, I hope I can play that video or that audio on the show today. He said that um, Buhari was more interested in getting power and not necessarily changing, you know, the fortunes of his people because he kept talking about these killings. That look at no, how. Is it no, 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 no. The the brother, the elder brother to um, Peter Obi's running mate. Um, I've forgotten his name. He now works okay. with the vice president. Yes. Oh, okay. Those ones, those ones are not for the gov. They are not for APC now. I'm talking about the northern elders. He the was a spokesperson for the northern elders forum. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> We did not hear them say anything. Well, I did. They were not vocal. They were not. The okay. contamination is not that vocal. You see them everywhere now. The TV station, radio station, they are talking now. Because what? It is not somebody from their side. And this is what is going to make Nigeria not to grow out of this problem. Because we are taking sides. Your brother is there. He's doing the wrong thing. You are quiet. When it's somebody else, you are vocal. We cannot get out of this problem. It okay. will keep happening. Okay. And look, see, all these killings. I'm not saying that the governors do not have anything to say. Shetima said he would take care of um, security issues. I have not seen anything different from what has been happening that they have done. Nothing. And we are still here in the same quagmire. People are being killed like chicken. And it's nothing. What we just hear is how many numbers are like, okay, just like, oh, no, no, it's not this. See, I just hope eh, that this problem... Eh, will not hit us all okay. of our faces. All right. Let's just be playing the, the, you know, the way we are playing. Like, everything is just fine. Okay. Things are not okay with us in Nigeria. I, all things right. are not fine. Thank Somebody you. Somebody called and was saying something else, that this and that. It is not about, um, am, I, am I, I security officer? Do I have intelligence? All right, we, we, we need to take other calls. We need to take other calls. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for calling. I totally understand how it hurts. Like I said, I didn't necessarily want to talk about this because... I'm just so, I'm so sick of it. I'm really sick of it. And it's more like a blame game. So we're bouncing it like, bouncing it around like a yo-yo. Oh, he, he, the governors will say, oh, we don't have powers over, uh, you know, security. That's why we want state police. In the interim, what can we do to stop the killings? I hate the fact that for the past six to seven years of my life as a journalist, all I keep talking about is people dying every day like sheep. It's really painful. I don't know about you guys, but it just... Ew, I know. And it's time for the governors to start doing something. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. We report, you decide. Topical conversations that matter to you. There are people for personal, religious, whatever reasons who do not want to take a vaccine. Mm-hmm. And I think they have the right. They cannot go to those who stop insecurities to force people to take vaccines. Let them come and kill me. I can never take this. Nigeria Info. Let's talk.
gain spiritual results. Now, until Clark Africa begins to supply my market, this one will be low, no. Then go supply my market or pay my supplier sharp, sharp. Before price will go up, I go begin to sell the piece once more. Now you see why dollar no fish pay me. If you don't want to make you the worry say price they change, before you go buy your market, time is always make Clark Africa begin to supply your market or pay your supplier. Or you message us for WhatsApp. 090-53-53-53-33 or visit our website at www.clan.africa with Clan Africa you fit to get your market today you make the dollar not go shame you <laughs> on the morning crossfire with me Kofi Bosham you have the big names the most pressing issues and the sharpest conversations we must leave that place of talking into the state of doing. Nothing has changed through their nose. When you are telling them after training, they can't migrate. I will not be part of those who will give soft landing to you guys who are running the affairs of this country. People are dying every day in an hour. People just go in and come out and read out all it to us. Come on, Kofi. We must step beyond the talk. We have the analysis. Join us as we dissect the headlines, bring you exclusive interviews, and dive deep into the heart of the matter. The big conversations live here. Join Kofi Bartels on the Morning Crossfire weekdays, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. Only on 99.3 Nigeria Info. Welcome back to your number one talk, news, and sports station. This is Nigeria Info. Nigeria Info. There's a reason why over one million people tune into Hard Facts every day. We discuss in-depth stories with sources behind the facts. The Lagos State High Court has been convicted, convicted has, Chicago uh, is difficult, so it's Hard never facts, going away, is it? Stories for the day. You hear diverse voices and opinions. I was my like, commercial teacher, and if she wants me to campaign with her husband, knowing that. You should not feel happy because there is nothing to happy about. Yeah, it's quite pathetic the way the country is going. We distinguish each story accurately with analysis. It's Hard Facts with Marian Okon on 99.3 Nigeria Info. It's the nation's number one talk news and sports radio station, 99.3 Nigeria Info. We're broadcasting live from the nation's capital, Lagos. And uh, from our audiovisual studios right here in Etimian Crescent, Victoria Island, Lagos. My name is Marianne O'Connor, and this will be your most authentic news experience. We're looking at the big three stories for today. Top story, we regret voting Tinubu, said, um, says Northern Elders. And of course, Benway buries 17 persons killed by herders as governor suggests solution. De a decade later. Um, cost of trade five times higher in Nigeria than the United States, says World Bank. And of course, you can begin to imagine the reason why these things are happening. High transportation, bad roads, insecurity, number one with its ugly head. I mean, you can name it. The list is endless. But join the conversation. I'd like to hear your thoughts on all of these stories. Um, share your thoughts on the Northern Elders Forum's um, no vote of confidence cast on Mr. President. Um, and of course, how long, for how long are we going to continue to play in kids' gloves with this issue? Whether it be headers, whether it be so-called bandits who are terrorists masquerading as they're not as if they're not and they're kidnappers and doing all sorts of terrorist activities or is, even if it's it'd be boko haram how long are we going to keep playing tic-tac-toe with these guys is it until they finish killing everybody i mean what Zero two zero one four six five seven one nine zero zero two zero one four six five seven one nine zero. If you are watching us live on YouTube and on Facebook, it's facebook.com forward slash Nigeria Info FM. Also on YouTube with Nigeria Info nine nine point three. Post your comments on the live stream. Uh, stream, I beg your pardon. I'd love to read and hear from you. Now, if you're listening to us from outside of the country, join the conversation. We're live on Skype with Nigeria Info FM. Go ahead, join the conversation. Let's talk. Hello, welcome to Hard Facts. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. What's your name? Yeah. Where are you calling from? Yeah, this is Chike. Tell me from my papa. Go ahead. Yeah. So I I want to talk about not an error saying that uh, the delegate voting for Tinubu. Uh, but the, first of all, we don't have elders in this country. Uh, elders, elders are. I'm so who, sorry. We have elders in this country. You cannot say that. The uh, elders are wise men who speak against evil anytime. Whatever you call them, we have elders. Keep it moving. But, but do you know do you know that uh, that uh, the so-called northern elders uh, were there last year? 
when uh, we had the kind of election, after all, the, the present president now was only not, um, it was only not uh, 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 voted by Northern Elder, uh, Northern, uh, Northern, uh, Northern, uh, Northern Littoral. It was voted by, they were, it was voted by the whole Nigerian. So I don't know where all those one is coming from. Not only that, I just the distractions. I don't believe anything like that does exist. Okay. Thank you very much for calling. Hello. Welcome to Hard Facts. Hello. Good afternoon, Marian. Good afternoon. Yeah, my name is Peter Ustifo. I'm calling from Abalonje in the Go ahead. Yeah. On the Northern Elder Forum, in my own opinion, they are only speaking for themselves. They are not speaking for all the Northerners. Remember the Arewa group. Then be that as it may, I also believe that they are trying to fly a political kite at the moment. You know, using socioeconomic kite like uh, the uh, bringing of segments of fun and the uh, CPN to Lagos from Abuja. And then, of course, the appointments, the various appointments made by uh, the president, which they feel is not so okay. You know, not avoiding our own. But the main thing is that they want Aerofy and, of course, uh, F- uh, Peter Obi to go to FDP and then contest. So they want to feel the point of the nation. But at the moment, it is the nation or the, the people are telling them that it is dead on arrival. That is that their own intention. So it is just dead on arrival. It cannot fly. Thank you very much. All right, thank you very much, Josefa, for calling. I don't know if, you know, but uh, again, it's your opinion. Hello. Hello. Yes, good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good afternoon. My name is Hector. I'm calling from Ecolodo Odongina. All right, go ahead, please. The Northern Elders, they are just playing. Nana and they break for their eye, Abby. Nana and they break for their eye. After many people have been killed, since they did not complain, it's now. I, I just feel sorry for the people that they are being killed like chicken. A neighbor of mine just came back three days ago. He went to bury his family. Four people in the family, they killed in the farm. He just came back three days ago. Wow. How long are we going to continue killing people, wasting people's lives? I'm just feeling pain, pain because it's moving. The more they, they keep in farmers, more people, nobody is willing to go into the farm. It will make the food scarcity of food to so hard more in the country. Hmm. I just say, maybe I'll so rest in peace. But as I pray that God will intervene. If our leaders are serious, they value human life. Do you, not, th- to do you not think that God is tired of all these our prayers because he's given us all that we need to we sort ourselves out, but we don't hope. want we to do it? To do we don't have hope in the government. We, we only have hope on God. That, to me, I don't have hope on government because there's nothing to <sighs> put my hope on them again. I'm sorry, I'm so, I'm like sorry to be a prophet of doom, but God is tired of you know helping you people or spoon-feeding you. He's giving you everything. He's tired. He's, he's for helping the children in Palestine. <laughs> Want us to do again? Now. I, mean, I really don't know. You have leaders, and your leaders don't want to be responsible. The, not, the leaders are not helping us. I know. They're not helping. That is what I'm saying. I don't have hope on them. I believe in God. That only that is the only way to intervene. Okay, since how long they have been killing now? What is the action of the president? What is the command? Everything supposed to be now state of emergency in that month. Did he take any action? That is why I say I don't have hope on them. Okay. I'm sorry. Good afternoon. All right. Thank you very much for calling. I do appreciate it. Yeah. Everyone is act- angry. Hello. Good afternoon, Miriam. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? Where are you calling this from? This is Bikunle. I'm calling from Lockify by Corodio. All right, Bikunle, go ahead, please. See, let us tell ourselves the truth. The Northern Elders Forum, of course, they have their, it's, it's their right to, to speak out. And if they don't speak up, you won't even recognize them. So they use that as, you know, to seek attention. So let me tell you the truth. I have been to the North. At least I know several states in the North. See, this this insecurity can only be reduced by President Tinobu. Even an administration after Tinobu can only reduce it. They can't solve it. That is the honest truth. Get that one today. See, go to the north. You see children in their number, 50, 100. They will be roaming about. They wake up in the morning. They carry a small bowl. They are looking for food to eat. Even in the capital of their cities. And somebody is saying that somebody should kill insecurity just like that. Look at the insecurity in the South. You can see that it is economical. But in the North, it is economical and it goes beyond that. Somebody will just enter a village, kidnap like 100, kill 70, kill 40, kill 30. Imagine. Is that not crazy? And they are blaming somebody that hey, you, must, you must kill insecurity just like that. Within a year, within two years, 
I must be sincere with Nigerians. Ten years, this security is still here. Government upon government can reduce it. Go to the one fifty children. They will just they will yeah, yeah. Up. But when they, you say why, why is the what's the essence of a government if you cannot? at least effect some change. What do you mean my by sister, government will come and government sister, will go? I mean, I, I don't get it. The government is trying. They can only reduce it. What, what are they trying? Where, where are they trying, please? Trying, trying, trying where? Where okay, exactly? Okay, okay. okay. If the government is not trying, you don't think that it will have gotten worse? You don't know? I don't even know anything. I don't know what to you believe. You don't know. So government... So I don't know what to believe our, because our, government can our, tell our, us our, one our, thing and they're doing something totally different. Our are doing nothing. Eh... Uh, Okona, the Marian, our military, they are doing nothing. They are doing nothing. What do you Police, mean, they are doing nothing. What do you mean by they're not doing it? No, that's not what I mean. What do you mean? When you say that's not what, what I mean. Bec what, what no, you but mean? You're, you're telling me that governments are trying. What do you mean by yes. trying? Is it trying that we need? I mean, the number of people that are but dying every day. They should do it as a go. Oh, they should do it as a go. You to okay, okay. Ibukunlo, ex explain to me what you mean. So they should do it as, as they can. No, no, so and then Hold on, hold on, Ibukunlo. Hold on. Let's not have a shouting match. You know, you calm down. You can you calm down, Ibukunlo? Let's talk civilly. What I'm asking is, how many people have to die for government to increase the pace at which things happen if it were your family members that were killed every single day would you be waxing respond. this lyrical can i respond yes please in, 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 in a few seconds <laughs> i need to move on okay see the problem is enormous you can't stop it at a go that's exactly what i'm telling you i said this administration week hello i'm listening to you quickly i need to this take other calls we try. i even tell you i said this administration will try the next administration will still try they can't bring it to zero percent that is what I'm nobody telling nobody's you. asking them to bring it to zero percent but people and need to be people need to feel safe in their homes See, because whether they do it or not whether they do it or not is still going to yes. reflect on other things like our economy yes. like our yes. food etc yes. i'm sorry Ibukunle, yes. i have to let you go you've done three minutes and I, 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 I can't be arguing with you what i'm saying again is we can't keep saying, oh, we'll do it in piecemeal. There are certain things that can be done that can put, pull, pull the plugs immediately in some areas. But no, we'll play, you know, any mini money more. Like, why are you letting outsiders come and mine your gold and kill your people and do whatever they like? They cause confusion in your country, and then you have to deal with it. If you start shutting your borders for all, from, you know, cut, cut these people off. Cut, cut them off. And sort yourselves out. No, we like the money. Like my guest said the other day, the, the money from the oil is sexy. The money from the gold, because they are sharing it with you. So you just, you couldn't be bothered how many more people die. Look at DRC. That's how he started. Hello? Maria. Yes, good afternoon. What's your name? Where are you coming from? Good afternoon, from? my sister. I, I, I was forced to say something. I, I'm a camera singer. I can't say for me, could I do? Yeah. Yeah, Marianne, you are doing a good job. Thank you for your professional work, because you are in short, you are, you are a presenter. The truth is this. You mentioned the factor behind this insecurity. The food short shortage, barrack amenities and everything. And somebody is there. When we have what is called independent country, it's not a, it's not a borrowed country. And you have internal, external aggression. And you are telling me that they are, they are trying. Well, it's his what opinion. It's, it's his opinion. Please don't attack him. It's his yes, opinion. I, know. I, I just, just want to make that point. I don't want to attack anybody on this platform because I know it's a word uh, they say. But the truth is this. Until we say, you have to we tell ourselves the truth. When it never happened to you, Marianne, you will never know the pain that people are going through. You may sit on your comfort home and begin to support somebody because you are not involved. The truth is this. This is Nigeria we are talking about. If the Northern either says something when they know about something that they observe, there are an other. Maybe they observed it. One victim to shine. Maybe they made the mistake. I don't know how the mistake come that they voted who they don't want to vote for. But the truth is this. We have voted President Tinum and this our president. Let him wake up and save this country. That is the simple truth. I'm not I'm not siding anybody. But the last caller is saying that he can't even do it. Even in ten years, I, I, it's not why, gonna that happen. Is why I, say I don't want to attack anybody, Mary, and you are a professional. All right. I, Thank I you very much for calling. Again. All right, bridge. thank you. Kenny's calling us via Skype. Let's take uh, Kenny's call. Hello, Kenny. Kenny. Hi, Marian. Hi, good evening. Uh, good evening. Yeah, I'm Kenny. I know. Um, yeah, concerning the security, I think uh, that other man is not very sincere. You know, why I said so is the government 
Okay, to a certain extent, it is is correct in the sense that it can be solved at a go. Yeah. But then you must be able to see actionable steps that this government is taking. Instead, this government is rather reactionary instead of being proactive. And I give you an example. The manifesto upon which the new bull ran was that when it comes in, it's going to create forest guard to man the forest where these agricultural things are done. Where is this? We have not heard anything about the forest guard that he said he was going to create to tackle insecurity. And then someone is saying that... It probably is, is in the it's, works. Yeah, it's in the works, but this is, one, this is almost one year, for God's sake. Are we going to wait for one year for insecurity to... To, to deal with to deal with with, with Nigeria before we talk with we, we make everything happen for them to make other budgets happen they do it instantly but they can't rush rush this kind of this important and emergency situations of insecurity and the funny thing is that it's this same APC government were attacking J Jonathan at that time that he should tackle insecurity he should fix it at a go but they are coming now they are saying they can't fix it at a go so you see the hypocrisy in this APC the APC government and these guys. So that man should rather go back and talk to his president about his manifesto and make it speed it up. Okay. Instead of coming here and arguing and waxing lyrica. Okay. Sorry. All right, Thank Kenny. You. Thank you very much for calling. I want to read messages coming Ooh. in um, on WhatsApp. and But I, remember, I told you that um, I spoke with, um, let me look at his name now, just to remember. Hakim Baba Amen at the time was a spokesperson of the Northern Elders Forum. Now he is obviously... Um, an aide of the vice president. He works with the vice president. But this is what he had to say briefly, if I can um, get you into it. What he had to say um, when I asked him about the North, the North's perspective on the 2023 elections. Let's take a listen. I say to you, Venice, uh, this is what you vote for. We're not a political party platform. We're not uh, um, people who say to people, to know that uh, this is where to go. I would like to remind you that... Uh, we have done a lot of other things. Um, again, uh, they are related to politics. We fought very hard to make sure that uh, Northerners have an equal chance uh, within their parties to be fielded. As we, our idea has, has never been just to simply uh, say to Northerners, uh, this is what you vote for. We are not a political party platform. We are not uh, um, people who say to people, to Northerners, uh, this is where to go. I would like to remind you that uh, we have done a lot of other things. Um, again, uh, they are related to politics. We fought very hard to make sure that uh, Northerners have an equal chance uh, within their parties to be children. As we so he, he's saying that as the Northern Elders Forum, they don't tell Northerners who to vote for. Um, and this is because, obviously, um, they're not a political party. But then, of course, for po politics reasons, people will tell you that, you know, in the North, they listen to the elders. They listen to the people that they look up to and hold in high esteem. And those are the people who point them in the direction that they should go. Like, this would be the guy that you're voting for. So let's vote for this guy. I'm guessing that that's what happens every election. I'm not sure. I'm just saying. But they're saying, well, yes, you, you know, we, we give guidance, uh, guidance, I beg your pardon, to our people. Uh, but then we don't necessarily tell them who to vote for. But I remember an interview I had with him before then. He also said that they felt bad for voting for Buhari because they thought he was the marshal that the country needed. But only to realize that he was just power hungry. He just wanted to write his name in the annals of history as a president again. He just wanted power. And look, at, he said, I cannot forget that interview. He said, look at what's happening in, our, uh, in the north. Our people are dying in their numbers. And he's done nothing. I can never forget that interview. If I find it, I will play it. But anyway, I want to read some of your messages. So if you are watching us live on YouTube, please feel free to post your comments. I'd like to read from you. Uh, let me go to WhatsApp quickly and then Facebook Live to read the messages that are coming in. Igwe Victor says, um, the killings are under, are even underreported. Marianne, do you know that, the th that three days ago, two brothers who were coming back from the farm were killed in Uzo Nwani Inugu? On, uh, by these, um, I will not use the words that you're using, on the Northern Elders and their stance on Tinubu supports, their hypocrites, their sense of, um, gosh, uh, merchant man, you're making it about your, your, your people. We're talking about people dying in the North. Don't make it about you. If we want to talk about the people that are dying in the East, we can talk about it, but don't make it about your people. 
okay? Let, yeah, it's not an ethnic battle. Godly Bestman says, um, the non are being myopic for saying that they regret voting for BAT. They haven't regretted enough because come 2027, they will still make the same mistake. Hmm. Afalabi Olajire says, the question is, who harbors those criminals? Same nonsense. Not would be free from criminalities when they stop harboring bandits and herdsmen. Okay. All right. All right, more messages. This one says our governments are buying SUVs <laughs> worth <laughs> one million, um, hundred million for ministers and cannot tackle insecurity in the country. Nigeria politicians are just acting movie. Patrick from Bulleri. Um, This one says, uh, <laughs> Nigeria is the more you look, the less you see. Give these northern elders another opportunity to vote today and they will still vote based on sentiments, tribe, religion, and not for someone who can work or do the work. They should leave the with the consequences. I'm sure you mean they should live with the consequences of their choices. KCC from Ojo. This one says, uh, the US and other advanced countries reached out to this government of Tinubu to offer assistance in dealing with insecurity issue and the government said it was considering their offer. For how long will the government consider while our people are being slaughtered in large numbers every day? This government has been a failure so far. Um, this one, Ibukunle, uh, okay, somebody's attacking Ibukunle. I'm not gonna, no, 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 please don't attack him now. They're saying he didn't see anything wrong in Buari's eight years, he has started with Tinubu. <laughs> um, this one says, Good day. Um, I don't understand how somebody will think that talking to killers or bandits will bring t an end to the activities. I don't understand how the caller will reason by condemning bandits, it will bring an end to their act. I, I, I. He probably is saying maybe we can appeal to their sensibilities. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. It's just that what will be the effect? Will it have a huge, or uh, I mean, Joseph from um, Ugudu, you know, you know what I'm saying? He's just saying these are human beings. Maybe if we can speak to them, but then if a man's criminal and his heart is like stone, I don't know. We probably, we probably need the voice of Angel Gabriel to speak to them. I'm just saying. <laughs> this one says. Um, uh, the solution to the insurgents is not far-fetched. If there's a will, let the governors, the president, senators, House of Representatives members, the state House of Assembly members, first lady, vice president, ministers, etc., slice their remunerations and security vote by 20 to 35 percent. Calculate the total. See what it can do in the decision of paying new military intakes, police, and others. Nothing less than 300k per month with quality ammunitions, Marianne. The things a mobile police that um, I'm, sh I'm sure you. <laughs> The things a mobile police that was sent to the north to fight insurgency told us while taking us in a car towards Edo State will shock you. Of how they gave him useless weapon, no bullet to fight. He told us how he lost his friend who was given a gun without bullets. Hmm. Uh, this one said, <laughs> they are called herd herdsmen, people who go from one place to another in search of grazing for their cattle. Why are they holding AK-47 instead of sticks they use to move their cattle around? Ibladi from Badagri. Mm, jam question. Um, this one says, the solution to insecurity in the north can only be solved by northerners themselves. If they are ready, no government can do it. They have to decide enough is enough and then work with relevant stakeholders. You don't think that they're tired already? You don't think so? Anyway, someone says, um, so Northern, Fo Northern Elders Forum can regret voting Tinubu now. When they were collecting dollars, uh, you can't be making those kinds of allegations. Did you see the dollars? Were you part of the people that collected the dollars? Did you see the money exchange hands? Show me proof. Uh -huh. He said it's unfortunate that we see the truth, but prefer to buy lies because of money. They're killing their people. The farmers could not farm as usual. Bandits cementing their lands. Meanwhile, they know them. Many of these killers are sponsored by people. Why are you regretting now? You know what I mean? <sighs> Oluvan Badagri says, not an elders forum never voted for Tinubu in the last general election. They voted for their son, Atiku. Oh, please. Um, what's your name, Olu? So, just like I told Merchant Man, this is not a battle between the North versus the South West. Stop it. You people are not children. They voted for their brother. What nonsense is that? Is Atiku not your brother? Stop that. Stop that, please. It's so irritating to hear these things that you people pedal. Are you not tired of it? It is their brother is their so backward. Um, Tony here says there's a belief among the northern elites that they are kingmakers and are the ones who decide who would be president of Nigeria. It's a terrible and dangerous trend. That's why everyone, even the underaged, 
on the aged wield voters cards in the north and nobody can do anything about it some sort of impunity they should tread with caution okay um this one says ooh, i have just one minute okay this one says until the government is ready uh, and sincere to deal with insecurity as governments reviewed the constitution on terrorism can these shenanigans happen in china or in any other country uh, they ran to borrow money. Criminals are released daily back to back to society and get celebrated. As for Northern elders, self-entitlement has eaten deep into them. They are the reason why the North is what it is today, Ezekiel. And finally, I'm going to read one more message here. Okay, Mr. Bully says, can you tell the Northern elders forum, um, all who voted this government to go and take a chill pill and relax. After all, they believe that this government, they believed in this government and stuck out their necks for it. It will remain like this even in 2027 so that we can all learn the consequences of wrong decision making. As for the incessant killings, uh, the authorities know what to do, but what they won't because it's politically inclined and motivated. Now, we've heard a lot of people say this about, I remember when I had that House of Representatives member on the show when we were talking about the killings, what was happening in Plateau, and he clearly stated because I think he's from, um, I think, Taraba State. And he was talking about the same thing that was happening in his state. That these people who are funding these terrorists are in the corridors of power. And that's the part that blows my mind. And I wonder, because even the presidency came out to say that <laughs> powerful men were behind the insecurity. I mean, I, don't, I cannot forget it. A spokesperson of the president said it. And I asked myself, these so-called powerful men, are they more powerful than the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Is that what they're insinuating? It beats me. But we've got to go on a break, Lagos. On the other side of the clock, we'll be talking Madam Landlord, and you don't want to miss the conversation. So stay with us. It's too hard. Facts, 99.3 Nigeria Info. I am Mary Anacone. You are listening to your number one station for talk. 99.3 Nigeria Info. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk. On the morning crossfire with me, Kofi. 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3.